Here come men in black, galaxy defenders, and that's about all I know. I can sing Nod Your Head if you want. Yeah, I don't think anybody's that enthusiastic about Nod Your Head. That's surely for Pitbull song then? Welcome to Still Bros of the Movies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alright, so, what are we going to see in today? Men in Black International. Yep. So, we're four deep into Men in Black now, so what is there to say about it? It's a, it was the movie, it was the franchise that launched Will Smith into a global phenomena box office powerhouse. Well, even then, he had a lot of, this was, in a lot of ways, this was the movie that actually made him a bigger draw, because it, it was like, it launched it, him, for, it launched him from the Fresh Prince, from being the Fresh Prince to being a global movie star. It proved that, that Independence Day was, the movies like Independence Day were not a fluke when they, it was like, this guy can actually, sell, this guy can actually sell movie tickets, and it, power, pairing him up with Tommy Lee Jones, who was also himself a big box officer at the time, seemed pretty, pretty good, ended up being a pretty good idea, especially when the two actually proved to have some pretty awesome chemistry. Then the other two, then the other two films came out, and honestly, we're probably in the minority by saying we actually enjoy the other two films pretty well. Yeah, they're not, they're not bad. They're not. Te I don't, we don't find them terrible. Yeah. I mean, granted, they're not as good as the original. The original will still stand perfectly on its own, but. The, but then again, the original was kind of lightning. Everybody's pretty much come to the conclusion that the original was kind of a lightning in the bottle situation. Especially since Barry Sonnenfeld, the original's director, he kind of fell away from it I don't, that after something happened in his career. I don't know. Maybe it was Wild Wild West. That movie seems to be end up killing. Ended up seemed to end up like just wrecking a lot of people's careers. I mean, Nine Lives, man. Nine Lives. Let's not talk about Nine Lives for a number of reasons, though. Yeah, but now Men in Black. But after years and years of saying Men in Black Four is going to happen, or a Men in Black reboot starring Jaden Smith is going to happen, or a Men in Black crossover with the Twenty One with the Twenty One Jump Street franchise is going to happen, they finally got one off the ground. Yes, we have Men in Black International, but it is not directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, and it does not star Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones. It is a brand new start in the universe. We have F. Gary Gray, who did Fate of the Furious, Straight Outta Compton, Be Cool, uh, Friday. He's done a lot of big... He's done a very eclectic... Like, his filmography is one of the most eclectic ever. Like, I think the only thing he hasn't done is a horror film. But, yeah, F. Gary Gray is directing a Men in Black movie, and the stars are pretty well established to have... Unlike Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, where it was like we gotta let's get a let's get a dynamic a sort of dynamic of that, these two box office powerhouses together. It's this time let's get two people who we know absolutely have fantastic chemistry together. They got Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth to play the main characters of this, who of course have shown their amazing chemistry in two movies already with. Thor Ragnarok and Avengers, the very brief amount of time they shared together on Avengers Endgame. So, yeah, we got... It's a great... So, it's great that these two have chemistry, and then they crammed the rest of the... And then the rest of the cast is this great... Is this great collection of actors. We've got Emma Thompson being pretty much the only... Per, one of the few people from the original movie to actually come... Original movies to come back, and that's even saying something because she was only in one of the gun, and it was three. We also have Liam Neeson, who he's had a bit of a year. He's had a bit of a year. I think we can all. I think we've all kind of gotten past that, so I don't think we need to really go deep into it. Yeah. We also have Kumail Nanjiani playing kind of a comic relief character, which I guess is fine. Let's get him some. Let's get him a big sci-fi movie before Marvel finally scoops. Him. Before that scooping him up by Marvel thing actually kicks in and he can actually start doing other big blockbusters. We'll see what happens, but right now he's got. But right now that's kind of. But right now we don't know 100% if he's going to be in a Marvel movie yet. But we'll see in a couple of months when they announce it. As for as for everything else, it's just it's a it looks decent enough. I don't know. Critics have not been kind to the, as kind to this one. Yeah. But in but I think we're but I think we're gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. Basically every year we come we have at least one movie where we're like no matter what the critics say we're probably gonna go see it. I think I don't know if this is the movie where 
that happens, but I like last year. I think what I can last year was kind of a toss up between. We had three that were. It was kind of a toss up between three. But either way, this is. By the way, this looks interesting. I mean, the first. I mean, the first one in black is still a classic. No matter what, it's gonna leave the. The original is probably gonna remain untarnished. Arnished, no matter what they end up making with it. I don't know why people. I honestly don't understand a lot of the hate behind the second and third ones, because kind of because I kind of liked what they did with them, even if they were just kind of rehashes of the original with the, the same buddy cop dynamic. But now we've got a completely different buddy cop dynamic because Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth are obviously not going to be doing the old guy young guy dynamic. No. In fact, it's basically. In fact, it's basically Chris. Hem from what I've heard, Chris Hemsworth is basically playing James Bond, a James Bond high version of an MIB agent. Yeah. Which sounds fun. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm optimistic. And maybe my expectations are a little lowered by the fact that the reviews have not been fantastic for this. But at the same time, it's still an MIB movie. This franchise is still very enjoyable. Even the weaker parts of it are very enjoyable. The entire franchise has been enjoyable. And we're... Kind of, and this is just kind of one of those summer blockbuster movies that's just going to be, that we're ready to see, and it's kind of a little bit of a palate cleanser because we just got off of seeing, because obviously we just got off of seeing kind of an Oscar bait movie, and now we're easing it back into the summer summery blockbuster stuff until next time when we're going to be, when it's going to just emotion. Are you going to do this before we actually go? Yeah, but until next week when we have this, when we have probably the big move the big movie of the month yeah so we're gonna so this is gonna be I don't know I just kinda wanna sit in the theater zone out a bit and yeah. I'm not asking I'm, I don't think this is gonna be like skyscraper levels of bad I mean kind of a bad movie I don't think this is gonna be Jurassic World levels of every time I think a little oh. bit more about it I hate it oh no it can't be I don't think it's gonna be Jurassic World skyscraper was just and Skyscraper, we had fun. It did what it did, but we're not, But I don't think we're ever going to want to watch it again unless it's on Netflix and we're bored one Saturday afternoon. Literally what we said in the review. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we're almost to the theater, so uh, we will see you guys after the jump. Yep. All right, we're out. I can honestly say I didn't hate it. It wasn't that. It's the weakest of the Men in Black movies, definitely. Yeah. Well, probably. We haven't seen two and three in a while. It's been a while since we've watched the whole trilogy back to front. But it's a pretty weak installment in the Men in Black franchise, all in all. But I, I think in the moment I, I thought it was okay. I'm probably going to forget it in the morning. Yeah. It feels like it's very forget. It feels kind of forgettable in the summer where we had Avengers Endgame and a bunch of other stuff happening. So, you know, I guess we'll see how it holds up in the morning, but. For right now, this is all. This is and always has been first reaction. So I guess we'll just kind of talk about everything. Yeah. So first things first. Obviously, Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson are the highlight of this movie. They have really good chemistry that they've that they obviously had from a long, from working together previously on Thor Ragnarok. So obviously it was so obviously the camaraderie on set was just basically they had, basically they both they showed up. They were like, hey, it's been like a month. And stuff like that. So they just kind of showed up. They hung out. They, it was a pretty, ch probably a chill atmosphere on set. I don't know. But and, yeah, it's good that their chemistry translated well into these characters that are kind of different from Valkyrie and Thor in the sense that they kind of swapped. Because because uh, in this one, she and Tessa Thompson is the no nonsense one, and in this one, Chris Hemsworth is kind of the hard party and. I mean, something probably happened to this guy to make him like this character. Yeah. Ultimately, to me, it kind of felt like a Mission Impossible movie. It's like a weaker Mission Impossible movie, but a Mission Impossible movie nonetheless. It kind of felt like there were there were story beats that it felt like it had to hit, and the fact that, Re for the record on that Mission Impossible thing, the fact that Rebecca Ferguson has a cameo in this movie does not help that particular observation. Yeah. And... I mean, there's a dynamic there. It's, yeah, it's a nice little. It's not exactly a buddy cop dynamic like the original, original Men in Black, but there's, but there, but it's there. There's a camaraderie and, camaraderie, and the two characters play off each other well. Camille Nanjiani as Pony is very, is a very interesting character. 
in the sense that they're that almost immediately after he's introduced, he kind of goes, he's kind of silent for whole chunks, and then he'll kind of, and then they'll kind of use him to riff on certain uh, things. They kind of have him just long enough so that he's not annoying, just long enough to remember he's there, but not uh, so much that he's annoying. So it's kind of a nice middle ground hand on him, and I mean, let's face it, he's a, and in the end, he's not Jar Jar levels of, he's not like Jar Jar Binks levels of annoying, I guess we should need to figure out a new shorthand for that. Yeah. And, but, yeah, he's the, he's basically the little alien sidekick that comes, in, that comes along halfway through the movie to just kind of be their alien, the little alien sidekick. Yeah. Emma Thompson, I guess, was pretty fun for as little in the movie as she is in the movie. It's, I mean, they didn't really give her anything particularly funny to do, so... Yeah. Just, I mean, I guess it's just kind of nice to have that connection to the original trilogy, to just basically be like, yeah, this definitely takes place in the same universe as the original trilogy, besides one, like, little thing where it's like, Will Smith has a, had a habit of not coming back for sequels and then showing up in painting form. Yeah. However, there's another thing is, there wasn't a lot of comedy to this. Yeah, there's the usual amount of quippiness that you get from most summer blockbusters nowadays, as opposed to Marvel, where it's like, oh, well, they're gonna be, we're gonna, well, this character's a smart ass, and so is this character, and this character, and this character, so obviously, we're just gonna have everybody quipping back and forth. But you don't get the, like, you don't get the level that Will Smith was throwing in, and, like, even in the Men in Black sequels, you got a lot of funny moments, and there was a lot of Will Smith just riffing for several minutes, like, in Men in Black 2 when he was to, when he neuralized the people on the train and then immediately went off for on a quick tangent before having uh, for so long that he had to neuralize them again. It kind of felt like everyone was kind of sticking to the script on this one. I don't know if they were. Maybe there were a few little more closer improvs, but I feel like they but it felt a little less loose and free like the like when you just let Will Smith kind of go like when you would just kind of let Will Smith kind of go loose in the original, in the first three, particular, the first one in particular. Yeah, with the which is interesting because Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth are obviously great at improv, as seen in the fact that Thor Ragnarok was a largely improvised movie. And Camille Nagiani is obviously a very funny comedian, and Emma Thompson and Liam Neeson have shown themselves to be rather funny when given the perfect opportunities. Yeah. He's, we're not going to go into our defense of a million ways to die in the West, but we'll say that his cameo in Ted 2 was freaking hilarious. Yeah. Speaking of Liam, he was in this movie a lot more than I thought he would be. Yeah. Thinking he, he would be, like, thinking he'd be the ripped torn of this movie just made me think, okay, so he's probably got like three or four scenes, but he's in there for a little while. He's in there a lot. He, he comes in and out of the movie a little bit, and it's kind of, and it's kind of, and it's kind of good, I guess. I, I mean... Compared to, I mean, let's face it, Liam Neeson, it's hard to compare Liam Neeson to every Liam Neeson performance to any performance to each other because he kind of has such a, because he has kind of a varied career here and there. Like, for every Schindler's List, there's a Taken 3. Yeah. This is, but this is somewhere in the middle, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, the funny thing about the music is I needed to check, to sit through the credits a little bit to check, but... They use, but Danny Elfman actually has a composer credit, but it's a co-composer credit, mostly because it seems that they used so much of his original music from the, music from the first three movies that they needed, all the way down to actually using the original orchestrations. Like the, like there's one point where they pull out that classical guitar version of the theme on the theme during the exact during a very similar beat from the first movie here and it's and I'm like did Danny Elfman score this or is someone else just ripping him off just completely ripping him off because a lot of because you listen to the music and it's distinctly the stuff you would always hear in the original Men in Black movies and you're like oh yeah so they're just using the same music and it makes sense in a way because obviously if you're going to go into a Men in Black movie you're going to expect that score, that same score that you hear, that you heard in all of them, but uh, but it, but at a certain point, it's like, dude, make up your own music. You don't need to piggyback on the score. Yeah. Also, another thing is that there really wasn't a lot of. One thing I always love about the Men in Black movies is practical aliens, and we really didn't get a lot of that this time around. The alien designs are interesting, but I think with 
without Rick Baker involved in the makeup department, it's kind of missing a certain charm to it. There was always a, a... That was probably one of the biggest draws of the Men in Black movies, is that there was always a something there. And here it's like we get a couple live-action aliens, but most of them... Most of them, of them are CGI. A major, the vast majority, there's the majority are CGI. I'm not gonna knock it for that because that's just because there's because there's just certain points where practical aliens just are a little too much to work with and uh, work with. There's probably not. To, it's, it's probably harder to get a bunch of extras and cut in, in a heavy in that heavy, much heavier makeup and rather than just be like like just walk around the scene we'll CGI something out cool over you later. But, but it kind of. Also, but it was kind of getting some Valerian flash, City of a Thousand Planets flashbacks, and uh, do it, not really something you want to get flashbacks for. We're not, not really. We're not knocking CGI aliens. If they work perfect, if they work well enough, then it's fine. It's just sometimes, it's just a, sometimes you want to throw at least a pre one practical alien in the mix to. And, and yeah, and with a fr and with a franchise that's known for the creativity and. Amazing practicality of the aliens that they've had. It's kind of a letdown when you're just seeing this, when you're seeing a lot of CGI. So, yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. There's some good stuff. There's some stuff that's just not great. I don't know. Once again, probably gonna forget about this the second we get out of the car. The second we get out of this car, it's probably probably gonna can forget all about it. So, yeah, I don't know. I. I once really, I didn't hate it, but I did not really particularly love it. Yeah. It's really kind of a mixed bag altogether, Heather. Also, it kind of felt like it ran a little bit too long. Yeah, whereas the, yeah, the first one, everyone is saying that this, that it was like an 80, it was like a tight 90 minutes or so. Oh, oh, but it felt bigger. This one, I don't know how long we were actually in there. It's, been about two hours since the movie actually started, so... So, probably about a little less than two hours. But it feels like it could have cut, like, 15 minutes or so. Maybe. Somewhere. I don't know where, but... Yeah. So, but there's... But it's... But it would probably be in there. Yeah. Any, anyway, guys. I think that's it. Uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to tune in next time when we ugly cry in a movie theater. Not kidding. Yeah. So until next time, guys. Bye. Bye.